Hello, my name is Professor John Benjamin, and this is Graphic Design One at West Virginia Wesleyan College. And today we're going to, or I'm going to show you, uh, how to create a collage in Photoshop using masks. All right, so the first thing we want to do is, well, do our research and our sketches, ideation, and uh, do our photo search and collect some photos, which I've already done. So I'm going to um, create a new Photoshop file. And a record album cover is what we're going to work on today. And um, so a record album cover is typically 12 by 3.25 inches. So I'm going to make my Photoshop file larger, about 14 inches. Um, so I've just got some extra bleed room. Um, and then I'm going to make my InDesign file at uh, 12.325. So let's set our um, Photoshop file to 14 inches at resolution of 300 dpi. This is a printed piece, so we're going to change from RGB to CMYK, and I'm going to call this album cover. I'm going to go ahead and open up my InDesign file. So I'm going to same thing, I'm going to create new in InDesign. All right, I'm going to change to inches just so I can see that this is the, uh, the dimensions that I need. Uh, make sure that you don't have facing pages checked. And it's a printed piece, piece, so it's going to need a bleed. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to give it a bleed of 0.125 inches. All right, and then when we're ready, we're going to place our Photoshop file into this InDesign file, because InDesign is a print program, and it creates print-ready PDFs that printers, uh, printer computers and software can talk to very easily. You can send a Photoshop file to a printer uh, as a PDF, but I wouldn't recommend it. Almost always, everything that you send into print production should be created in an InDesign document. Even if the typography and everything is entirely made in Photoshop, you're still going to place that in an InDesign file and then export a PDF uh, to send to the printer. Great, okay, back to Photoshop. Right, and then I'm going to hit the return key to execute this. So when I hit return, it places the images. Great. And it's nice when I do that, um, the, my file names are already in here. This is very important. Um, you always want to have very clear folders and file names. As you get more and more complicated in your collaging, uh, you'll need to find your way or navigate around is inside the canvas. And so you're going to come up here to your move tool. You can also get there by hitting the letter V. And then make sure to start off you have auto select. And then you want to select layer rather than group. All right, so that way I can just click on the images that I'm pointing on and I can move them around like so. Now they're all quite large and so to start off I want to focus on one image. So I'm going to come down here to my layers palette and I'm going to turn off a few layers. There, and I'm just working with this racetrack image. All right, so I want to delete these trees in this sky and then this area over here. Now, the wrong way to do it, if I turn this on image in the background, is to go to, let's say, uh, the eraser tool right here. And then I could start erasing parts of this. Now of course in order to do that right now it's my image is a smart image so I'd have to go and layer and rasterize this smart object. And at that point then I can go ahead and just erase parts of it. But what the problem here is is this is destructive editing. And I can undo this, but as I move on further into my comp into my development of this collage, um, undo is, is no longer going to be an advantage, because I'd have to undo all the other work that I've been working on. So we want to avoid all sorts of what's known as uh, destructive editing. And so rather than that, one of the best ways to collage in Photoshop is to use what's called a mask. All right, so how do we do that? So I'm going to make sure I have this image selected. You can see I have it selected in my layers palette here. And down at the bottom of the layers palette is this really delightful add layer mask 
button. And so I'm going to, with that selected, I'm just going to say add layer mask. And what you see here is just a white box that's connected to my image. But if I come over to here, my tool palette at the bottom, and before that I select my brush uh, tool right here, which I can also get to by hitting the letter B. And now if I click on this little, these little squares right here, that will default to black and white in case you have any colors here. You need to have, be in black and white. And now this little double arrow here, which is switch foreground and background, you see if I click that, I switch the foreground and background color between white and black. So now I want to paint in black. Now first of all, let's change the size of our brush. So if you have the brush selected, you can see up here, your palette options have changed. And so I'm going to come here and I'm going to make my brush maybe a little bigger and a little softer. Great. All right, and then you can see I'm erasing with a fairly large and soft brush. And that's one way to do some collage editing. All right, pretty good. And I can come down here. I can do the same. I can make the brush a little smaller. First, I'm going to get rid of this bit here. And then I'm going to make it a little smaller. Come around this curve. Great. And there, I pretty much have that taken care of. So what did we do? If you noticed, when I was painting in black, it paints black over here. So black represents transparent pixels, and white represents opaque pixels. Non-destructive, because my photo is all still here. See, if I go back and I change to white over here, see this? And white's my foreground color. If I paint with white, then voila. I haven't lost a single pixel in my composition. So I can go in and I can make changes. I can, I can tweak, I can zoom in, Command plus plus, and I can maybe fix some of these areas here. Then I'm like, oops, I didn't want to do that. So then I just go back to the white and then I can fix it because I haven't lost any pixels. I'm simply masking over the image. I can get it just the way I like it that way and I can make edits. And the image, as you can see here in the... Great, so let's do some more collaging. So I'm done with this for the moment. I'm going to turn that off. And the next layer I want to work with is this micro shot of water on a leaf, which I don't think is a good name. So I am going, I'm just going to double click on the name there. And I'm just going to call this circuit board. And so now I want this circuit board here to cover the whole background. All right, so there's a real easy way to do that. I'll just scale it. So now to do that, I can go edit, transform, and scale. Now, an easy way to do that too, I can just hit Command T. Now, just go ahead and drag that anchor point out. Just get this so it fills up the whole composition. That looks good right there. And then I'm going to hit Return to execute. All right, I like that, the way that's looking. I'm going to move this down, like so. Great, turn that off, and that off. Because so now I want to work on man standing in front of a whiteboard. All right, now I'm going to show you the, another way to select and mask. So I just want to select this fellow right here. And it's going to be fairly easy to do because he's standing out with a lot of contrast in front of this white background. So I'm going to come up here to my quick selection tool, or W. All right, and just like the um, paintbrush, I can change the size of that here. Or... What you can do is a little more easily is you can just hit the left and right bracket. So the right bracket makes your brush bigger and the left bracket makes it smaller. And if you hold the shift key down, that increases or decreases the softness. All right, so I'm gonna have it pretty hard and not so large. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of paint inside this fellow. And then I'm gonna command plus plus to zoom in. And what Photoshop is doing here with this brush tool is selecting similar pixels. So I'm going to say I want to select these pixels as well. And I want to get the ear there too. And if you make a mistake, you simply come up here and then minus. So let's say I didn't want this little bit here of his chin. I do, but you know you can see how I can subtract areas. And then I come back here and then I just go ahead and add them back. 
Now that I have him selected, I simply do the same thing that I did with the racetrack. I come down here and I click on Add Layer Mask. And voila! It doesn't look like too much happened, but if I turn on the background you can see that a lot happened. So now I can go ahead and select my Move Tool and move him around. And I can turn on my racetrack. I think I'd like to put him over here. Alright, and then the last image that I want to manipulate is the man looking at his phone. I'm going to click on that and drag that to the top. Turn that back on so I can see it a little better. And here it is. And I'm going to do the same thing with him. I'm going to use my quick selection tool. Great. And I'm going to select his suit and his nose. I'm going to have to zoom in. Command plus plus plus. And now it looks like I might need to make my brush a little smaller to get the rest of that cell phone. Perfect. Now another really important navigational tool is the space bar. Whatever tool you have in Photoshop, if you hold down the space bar, it turns into a hand, and then you can easily navigate around. All right, he looks like he's pretty well selected, except a bit of his nose there. All right, and then I'm going to Command minus minus, and I'm going to select the mask tool, like so. Voila. Now I've got some extra pieces here that I didn't want. So I'm going to erase those. Am I going to use the eraser? No. I'm just going to paint over that um, with my black brush. So I'm going to go make sure I have black. I'm going to go to my brush tool. And I'm just going to erase that like so. Easy peasy. Now what I want him to do is appear to be behind this part of the racetrack and in front of that part. So how do I do that? Simply, I need to duplicate the racetrack. All right, so I'm going to select the racetrack layer. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to say duplicate layer. Racetrack copy, that's fine. All right, so now I need to put the cell phone fellow in between these two layers. So right now, this part of the racetrack is in front of him and this part is in back of him. And what I want to do is erase part of this part of this track. So I'm just going to simply select that layer, go to my brush tool, I have to select the mask itself, pardon me. And then I'm just going to erase this track away from him, like so. Easy peasy. And it appears like he's in front of that part of the track. Now if I want to move him around, I'm like, uh-oh. So I probably want to erase a little bit more of the track than that. How I can see what I'm doing is by turning off the background racetrack and then selecting this one to my brush tool. And I'll make the brush tool a little bigger. I can, I can erase a lot of it as much as I want, really, except for this area. Because then when I turn back on the background layer, it's all there. I'm going to move him down a little bit. Okay, so now we've got a fairly interesting com uh, album cover for OK Computer, for Radiohead's album. And But it looks, the colors are pretty dull. These blues don't really go with this green, and then I've got this black and white image here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer, and then I'm going to add a gradient over it. So I'm going to come down here to add new layer button, click on that, make sure it's at the top. All right, then I'm going to come over to my gradient tool here. You can get there by hitting letter G. And like all tools, the tool option palette will change. It defaults to this black and white gradient. I'm going to click on there and select a different one. I'm going to select this orange and purple gradient. Great, now that I have the gradient tool selected, I'm just going to click and drag a gradient over that. Okay, it's on the top layer, so it's covering everything up. But what I'm going to do is change the transparency mode for this layer, which I do by selecting the layer and then clicking up here. Right now it's normal. I can, and if I, can, if I have my mouse clicked, I can kind of scroll over the different options I have here until I find one that suits me. Bye. All right, great. And so there is my album cover, SD file. Now I'm ready to add some typography to it. So now I'm going to move over to InDesign. And then I'm going to say File, Place. My album cover design. And there it is. And then I'm going to click into my InDesign document. I'm going to zoom out. And minus. All right, and you can see I, I created a lot of extra bleed here. Um, 
in case in a record album there could, you need, might need extra um, bleeds. But I'm just going to go ahead and move that into just the edge of my bleed that I have here, like so. That's it. And I'm going to hit Command Plus to zoom in. Now it looks a little pixelated. That's to save memory. If you want it to look nice and crisp, you just go View, Display Performance, High Quality Display. And there you have it. All right, so now I'm going to add my copy or my title. So I'm going to go to my title. I'm going to create one text box, not two. Don't need two. I'm going to type the name of the album. All right, and then I'm going to increase the size. Now in Properties, you can increase the size here. You can also hit Command, Shift, and Angle Bracket to increase the size on your own. It's a dark background, so I'm going to need a light type. I'm going to um, align to the right. So I'm going to select that, and then if I have my properties palette open, I can just come down here to appearance. I can change the fill to white. All right, and now the nature of this album really requires something a little more modern. So I'm going to change this from minion to and I'm going to make Radiohead as a sans regular. All right, I'm going to make it all caps though, so you can see here in your properties palette when you have that selected, you can hit all caps. I'm going to make it a little smaller. The title of the album is more important. And then I'm going to track it. So here I can easily track a little bit at a time. I'm just going to type in 300 and hit return. And then I'm going to hit the W key so it gets rid of my guys to see how it looks. And there's Radiohead's uh, re-release cover album. Now to save this, to send it to the printer, first you're going to save your file. Command S. Okay, I'm going to name it the same. Now you want a printed PDF, PDF for print. So we're going to say File, Export, and right here in Format, we're going to make sure that it's Adobe PDF Print, save to the same folder, and I'm going to hit Save. And then Export. Now a couple of things we can check here is Marks and Bleeds. So they're going to need, I added those bleeds, and so they're going to need crop marks along those 0.125 bleeds. So right here under Marks and Bleeds, I'm going to check crop marks and I'm going to say use documents bleed settings. And there you have your new album cover that's ready to send to the printer. Great, well, thanks again for joining me and I hope this helps.